I'm sick and tired of these hop, skip, and jump to glory land Pentecostal tunes. Brother, Brother Castle gets four free from the Stamps Baxter Music Company there in Fort Worth. What do you suppose he wants them for free for? More profit? Simple as that. Shoot, I paid a hundred dollars. So I could put that one song, I Wanna Be King, in my songbook. My name is Lee Beck. That's spelled B-O-E-K. Well, I first got involved in theater, I think, um, you know, when I was about 10 years old, I was asked to MC a May Day celebration at my grammar school. And, uh, and I had the bug, and I performed in the eighth grade in, in uh, shows, and in high school, and in college, and uh, throughout my life. I also grew up to uh, be a, an evangelist. Uh, my family was converted when I was a child. I looked back through the big bay window in our little two-bedroom house there in Carmichael. And I see another couple in there with my mom and dad. Everybody looks real serious. My mom and dad are converted to fundamentalist Christianity. This play I've been developing over the last three years, three or four years. Um, started just telling stories. Many of these are stories that I told about my life uh, and have been telling for a long time, things that actually happened to me um, during that era of my life. There are several uh, people that I came in contact with during my time as a preacher, and I tell you about some of them. I tell you about the, some of the styles of the various preachers, how they, how they perform themselves on, on the, uh, in the pulpit and uh, the styles that they had that impressed me when I was a kid. There was the great debater who loved to pound his chest like this as he took us back to the original Greek for our, his proof texts. He mesmerized me with his uh, searing logic and long words written on the blackboard and dissected. Uh, and many other preachers and their styles. There's one fellow who fluttered his eyes when he sings and acquires a beatific look upon his face. And uh, oh, just a lot of different styles like that that are fun uh, that I toss into the piece because they were people who impressed me and who helped me to be a better preacher. I, you know, I grew up with preachers as my heroes. Preachers would come to my home congregation where my daddy was the preacher. And uh, I would get acquainted with them. They'd stay in our house. They'd, they'd hang out with me and uh, with my brothers. I have three brothers. And uh, we, we just thought they were the greatest guys because they were traveling and they were on the road. And that, that myth of being on the road and of traveling from place to place, and that appealed to me a lot. And so I got caught up in that as soon as I possibly could. I was offered a scholarship to a Baptist college when I was a kid right out of high school. But I was advised by my elders to turn it down because it would be dangerous to get a liberal education. So I did. But uh, I went ahead and started traveling right away with a seasoned evangelist. And we went from city to city preaching, traveling by bus and, uh, and by car, and never by airplanes at that time, uh, all across the South. And this was in the early 60s. I started in 1959 as soon as I graduated from high school. And uh, much of our story takes place um, through the very early 60s. It was right at the dawning of the Civil Rights Movement when Negro churches were being burnt down all across the South. And I became involved in uh, trying to establish a colored congregation there in the South. And, uh, and what happens then uh, is part of what happens in the play. And there are other influences on my life that eventually caused me to put all of that behind me except for doing this play and become an actor and a performer, which I've been doing ever since I was in my early 20s. There's Brother Castle with his great big belly. He likes to hitch his belt as he jumps up and down with a handkerchief in one hand, wiping his brow while he preaches about the great speckled bird in the book of Revelations and in that Roy Ahab song. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a coming of age story in a sense, and it's a very uh, Americana piece. I think that uh, many members of the audience will find, uh, they'll recognize the story. And it doesn't matter what religion you are. I've had uh, 
Jewish people, uh, fundamentalist people, and not so fundamentalist people, uh, tell me that they enjoyed it and that they uh, they got something out of it. It reminded them of their youth and their lives, and and you know that's what I like to do if I can with my theater. To, uh, but I think you'll find it also uh, poignant and inspiring and interesting and fun. So and it's musical. So you know what more do you want? I think you'll laugh and you'll cry <laughs> because uh, the story has a lot of poignancy, uh, unexpected turns and twists that I don't want to tell you about. I want you to come see. And, um, uh, but I think you'll laugh a lot. There's music. I'm playing with the wonderful musician Nolan Porter, who uh, has worked with me many times on many projects. And uh, he's a wonderful guy and a terrific musician. Uh, you can look him up. He's had some hit records in his youth as well. And, uh, and I'm directed by Peter Coors, an excellent uh, director and a good old friend of mine for many, many years. So it's been really great working with him and uh, the many other people uh, that have worked with me on this project, Mitch Greenhill, Roberta Levitol, uh, and, uh, and others. You can visit us at publicworksimprov.com. That's our website, and uh, our other website is latimesbomb.com, and uh, we perform uh, at a lot of coffee houses. We do the Stella Adler with Mike the Poet once a month, and um, tell stories with a lot of other great spoken word artists, and, uh, and many other venues, so we'll always be happy to have you come around and see what we're up to. Get on the mailing list. <laughs>